ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਹਨਰੇਬਲ ਚੇਅਰ ਡਿਸਟਿੰਗਿਸ਼ਡ ਸਪੀਕਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਮਾਈ ਡੀਅਰ ਫਰੈਂਡਸ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ a poet a musician a linguist a leader and a warrior a multifaceted personality who i believe is one of the most remarkable and fascinating figures in world history the sikhs carry this great legacy and the world should know about them but even more importantly we should not forget our own heritage growing up there was this commonly prevalent saying a joke in fact the only culture that sikhs know is agri culture while i am extremely proud of this achievement of my community this is not the only success that defines us while we are hard working and successful farmers and agriculturists we are also artists we are painters sculptors calligraphists singers dancers musicians actors photographers and so much more i am proud to represent here today the sikh foundation the one organization that recognizes the power and the value of the arts who has worked consistently over decades to collect preserve promote and share our material heritage the seek foundation was established right here in palo alto 50 years ago in 1967 it has played a pioneering role in the development of sick arts today sick arts is celebrated at museums numerous publications are published every year there is increasing interest from collectors and more importantly support and engagement from the community for our artists but it was not always so the beginning was in 1974 when the sikh foundation published a special edition on sikh arts in its quarterly journal the sikh sansar It was in this journal that the term or the genre sick art was introduced for the first time. In the words of Professor R P Shrivastava, I quote, "For the first time in the history of journalism, a systematic attempt is being made to record the significant contributions made by sick artists, sculptors, architects and artisans in the Punjab and elsewhere." No concerted effort was ever made by any author or historian and so far no one has tried to write anything on this aspect of achievement of the Sikhs which has glorified the pages of Sikh history and beautified the Punjab with architectural monuments unquote The first display of Sikh arts opened here in San Francisco at the Asian Art Museum in 1992. Since then, there have been over 7 art exhibits all over the world at leading museums including the Victoria and Albert in London, the Smithsonian and the Rome in Toronto. The first permanent sick art gallery also opened here in San Francisco at the Asian Art Museum in 2003 and i'm delighted to share with you today that we now have another permanent sick art gallery established by Dr. Kanuja at the Phoenix Museum in Arizona 
And I do uh, invite you all to please take the time, now that you are in the Bay Area, to visit the Asian Art Museum here in the city and see for yourself the spectacular emerald seal ring of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, with which he used to seal all his official documents and over half a dozen other Sikh artworks, which are on display at this time. For the artistic and the academic study of Sikhism, numerous publications have been released, including our Sikh art from the Kapani collection, which was released at the 50th anniversary celebrations of the foundation. It is co-published with the Smithsonian, and I have the honor to co-edit this volume with Dr. Paul Michael Taylor. This milestone publication documents the unrivaled collection of Sikh art, lovingly put together over a lifetime by Satinder Kaur and Narinder Singh Kapani. Deeply inspired by the Sikh gurus, the collection displays a wide range of Sikh artistic expression over its 500-year history. The collection includes beautiful portraits, spectacular paintings of the Golden Temple, illustrated manuscripts, royal arts and treasures of the Sikh Maharajas, arms and armaments, textiles, stamps, coins, and contemporary arts. And it is from this treasure trove of Sikh art that I have selected to share with you today artworks and drawings that inform us of the life and times of Guru Gobind Singh. Starting with this meticulously detailed pen and ink drawing of the Gurdwara, which marks the birthplace of the Guru, the Takhat Shri Harmandir Sahib, Patna Sahib. The artist B.S. Malhans traveled extensively all over India to create these series of drawings which mark the Gurdwaras associated with the Guru. This early 20th century poster of the Guru shows him in the pose of something like Bollywood heroes, casually leaning against the ramparts of a fort with a partially visible cannon, dressed as a royal prince of the times, wearing a turban adorned with a white plume, endearing him to his people as Kalgitar Patsha. The Guru has a measured look on his delicately drawn face but sports a sword on his hip and bow and arrows on his back. In 1685, the young guru and his family were moved from the village of Nanki Chak further into the Himalayas. Another drawing by Malhan vividly captures the serene beauty of the location. The Gurdwara marking the Guru's residence is on the banks of the quietly flowing river Jamuna. The township came to be known as Ponta Sahib. Here the Guru spent his time advancing his classical education and nurturing his poetic genius. At the same time, he honed his administrative skills and military skills, preparing himself well for his role as a spiritual and the martial leader of the Sikhs. After proving his prowess in battle as a brilliant military strategist, the Guru moved back to Nanki Chak. This early 19th century masterpiece is in the popular artistic style associated with the Guru. He is astride his horse flanked by three attendants and set amidst a verdant green landscape of rolling hills. Dressed in fine clothes, adorned with jewelry, and sporting a kalgi on his turban, he holds the reins of his horse, on which is perched his white hawk, Chitiya Bajambala. The artist has drawn a halo around his head, signifying his high spiritual position. The Guru's horse, richly embellished and adorned, is colored blue and red. Guru Gobind Singh was also known by the epithet, Rider of the Blue Steed, 
Nile Kore da Aswar, as in this early 19th century watercolor, showing the guru in a similarly stylized composition rendered with delicacy and elegance. This time at Anandpur was a momentous phase for Sikhs. Five forts were built here. By now, the guru was clear about his mission in life. He writes in his composition, Chandi Charitra from the Dasam Granth. Deha Shiva bar mohe, shubh karmante kabhu na taru. Na daru arso jab jaye ladu, nischay kar apni jeet karu. Ar sikho apne hi man ko, eh lalach ho gun to uchro. Jab aav ki od nidhan bane, atahiran me tab juj maro. In this contemporary painting by master artist Devinder Singh, the scene is set for the Basakhi celebrations of 1699 at Anandpur Sahib. The Guru is baptizing the five beloved or Panj Pyare who came from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, and Orissa. These five beloved, hailing from different parts of Hindustan, formed the nucleus of the Khalsa the order of the pure. The call to battle came soon. The Guru's two elder sons, Sahibzadas Ajit Singh and Jujar Singh, were martyred in the battle with the Mughals at Chamkor. The artist imagines the scene before battle. The Guru is presenting his older son with a sword while the entourage around them looks anxious even though the brave young Sebzada is smiling in the face of certain death. Artist Arpana Kaur has painted this delicate watercolor of the Guru with a pen in his hand, sitting stoically composed with a faraway look in his eyes, with all seeming lost, but still full of faith and courage. He pens his famous poem, in Punjabi, Mitar Peyare Nu Hal Murida Da Kena. The people of Punjab were appalled to hear the news of the dastardly murders of the Sahibzadas and flocked to the Guru's camp. The famous battle with the Mughals was fought in 1705 at Muksar. Shown here in the painting, Mata Pa Kaur, lovingly called Mai Pago, a devoted follower of the Guru, holding center stage, fighting alongside the 40 Sikhs who had deserted the Guru earlier and redeemed themselves in this battle as the Chali Muktev. Thereafter, the Guru retired to the village of Talwandi Sabo and prepared the definitive addition of the Granth Sahib to be passed on as Guru for all Sikhs. It was here where he finished the Zafar Nama, the epistle of victory and sent it to the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. His own writings were collected by Pai Mani Singh and compiled as the Dasam Granth. The Guru then proceeded to the Deccan to personally meet Emperor Aurangzeb. This fine miniature of the Guru astride a pinto horse, fully armed with swords, bow and arrows, and dressed in Mughal fashion, is a copy from a set of miniatures attributed to the workshop of Nensuk of Guler in the early 19th century. While some of the paintings in this set are on display at the Government Museum in Chandigarh, the rest of the paintings are in the Lahore Museum. This is a legacy of the partition of India in 1947, when art collections were also divided between the two nations. Making this complete set in the Kapani collection even more significant. On 7th October, 1708, Guru Gobind Singh's life journey ended in Nandir, Maharashtra. The Guru's last directive to the Sikhs was to bestow the guruship of the Panth on the Shri Guru Granth Sahib to be revered as the living embodiment 
of all ten gurus. When we look back at history, we see that within 100 years of the Guru's death, the Sikhs had an empire of their own. The Punjab was one of the last kingdoms to be annexed by the British. And again, within 100 years, India was freed from foreign rule, greatly enabled by the sacrifices of its freedom fighters, many of whom were from the Punjab. It is the legacy of Guru Gobind Singh that inspires a community which is less than 2% of the population in its homeland, but contributes over 40% to the national grain pool. It is the legacy of this great human being that the Sikh community in Canada, which is also less than 2% of the population, but has contributed four ministers to the national cabinet. Brave young Sikh women are making waves all over the world. Lily Singh of Canada and Gurmeher Kaur from India were named as the top 10 next generation leaders by Time magazine. The scientific contributions of Dr. N.S. Kapani changed the world forever, enabling this age of fiber optic connectivity. Recent world events illustrate the continued need for greater understanding of Sikh values and contributions to the world. And art is a beautiful and a powerful way to educate ourselves and others about our heritage. Through art, we can share our pride in our values and traditions across communities and across the barriers of language, color, race, and religion. Before I end my presentation today, I would like to personally give you some information about the Sikh Research Journal that we publish on our webpage, SikhFoundation.org. This is a space for all community members, including educators, researchers, and students, to publish and share your work. If you would like some more information, we have a table outside. Please stop by and we will give you, be happy to talk to you. And finally, I ask of you that when you go back home today, look around you. Do your local institutions truly represent the community you live in? Do your libraries, your museums, and public spaces reflect and include your heritage and history. If they do, please share those stories with us. And if they don't, let us change that collectively. The Sikh Foundation will be your partner. Thank you very much.